Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friendly professor from Johnson County Community College. And the subject of this short screencast will be hyperlinks. Hyperlinks are created using the A tag, which may seem strange, but it's short for anchor. We're going to put an anchor around some text that when clicked will take you someplace else. As such, the A tag has one critical attribute, the href attribute, that tells the page where we're going to go should the user click this link. If we wanted to go to the homepage for my college, Johnson County Community College, we would type in the href value as such because that's the link to the homepage for JCCC. And then within the opening and closing A tags, we simply put the text that we want the web page to show as the hyperlink. So that's it. A hyperlink is an opening A tag, a closing A tag, and one important H ref attribute value. I'll save that page and refresh it, and there's my link, Johnson County Community College. When I hover over it with my mouse, I see the mouse pointer change to a hyperlink mouse pointer, and when I click it, I do go to the home page for Johnson County Community College. Now you can put these A, A tags around anything. Typically they're around text, such as I provided here, but oftentimes you'll surround an image. I'm going to put that same hyperlink around this image and change the image into a hyperlink. We'll go back to jccc.edu, and here's the image tag. It has SRC and ALT attributes, so it's a longer tag, and I'll close it right here. Now, you always want to make sure you put in your closing A tag, because if you forget it and save the page and refresh it, then the rest of the whole page becomes a hyperlink, because you've never told the code where that hyperlink ends. So I'm going to come back here and put in my closing A tag after this image tag, save the page, refresh the page, and there we go. Now my image is a hyperlink, as I can see by my mouse pointer. I can also see in the lower left-hand corner that when I hover over the image, I get a little indicator there based on the browser of where I'm going to go. I'm going to go to jccc.edu if I click that image. As soon as we bring up the A tag, something else important enters the picture that is not quite as obvious, and it'll become more obvious when I enter another hyperlink here. This time I'm going to go to http colon slash slash w3schools.com, which is a website that provides a lot of reference material and little hands-on activities for HTML and CSS. I recommend it for my beginning HTML and CSS students. It really breaks things down in bite-sized pieces. If I put a second hyperlink here, my question to you before I refresh this page is where do you think that hyperlink is going to show up? Below Johnson County Community College as it is in the code or to the right of Johnson County Community College? Let's find out. When I refresh this page, I get one tiny little space here and then I get W3 schools on the same line. The reason they're on the same line instead of two separate lines is because the A tag is an inline tag. This is the first time we've talked about inline versus block content, but it's very important as we go down the road and style our pages. There are only three inline tags that you really need to worry about at this point in your coding career. The three tags are the A tag, as I've just proven to you, the content stays on the same line. And that makes a lot of sense because if we were going to pick out something from the middle of a heading or the middle of a sentence to tag as a hyperlink, we wouldn't want that content to come down to a new line. So I'm gonna pick out this word habits and hyperlink that to Johnson County Community College. So all A tags, are considered inline tags. The other two tags that are considered inline tags that are inline tags are the image tag, which is a little bit harder to see because it's got height and width, and also the span tag, which we'll talk more about later when we get into CSS a little bit deeper as well. So for now, just realize that the hyperlink is an A tag and it's an inline tag. So you might be tempted if you wanted these hyperlinks to be on their own lines to come here and put in breaks and you'll see line breaks coded three different ways. It's the BR tag, but oftentimes people will, you'll see a slash at the end, or sometimes you'll see a space slash. Again, that ending slash in void or empty tags is a throwback to previous versions of HTML, specifically XHTML. I'm gonna save this and refresh it, 
and you can start getting the desired effect that you want to see on your page. And sometimes you'll even see people copy and paste several line breaks to create extra space like this. But I want you to avoid that temptation with your navigation. And you might say, well, Lisa, I want them to be on their own line. So if the A tag is inline content, how do I get those hyperlinks to be on different lines? Well, the more common and professional way to tag your hyperlinks in your navigation an unordered list, because that's really what the hyperlinks in the navigation system are. They're list items in a unordered list. So you're gonna to wanna to make every item in your navigation system a list item in an unordered list. And so it looks something like this. So you've got a list item and inside the list item is a hyperlink of text. When I save this and refresh the web page, now our navigation links are lining up on different lines. The reason for that is that LI content, LI tags are block tags, not inline tags. Now you might not like the styling here, you might not like the bullets, you might even want these hyperlinks to be on a horizontal line. Even so, you're still going to want to code them as an unordered list. And why? Because that's what they are. They're an unordered list of items. So semantically, the current rage is to put your hyperlinks inside of list item tags, inside of the unordered list tags in the nav. And that's what I'll expect you to do for your final project. So your final project, the hyperlinks will look something like this. Home.html. Your first page is probably going to be your home page. Your second page might be named something like uh, articles. And notice that if the file is in the same folder as whatever page you're referencing it from, you don't need to put the entire long HTTP colon slash slash URL. The only time you need that is when you're going to a web page that's outside of your site. If you're inside of your own site, contact us page, you'll just put the name of the file, provided that file is in the same folder as the page you're referencing it from. So for your final project, your nav section is going to look much like this with five pages. I've only put three in here, but you'll have five pages. And then we'll style it however we want, with or without bullets, in a line, or as block content, according to the desires of our creativity and our style sheet. Thank you for listening.